if I were to ask you what ethics is, what would you say? Cultural or social understanding of what is right or wrong because what the okay. United cultural. States may say is right or wrong okay. may not be right or wrong in okay. Europe. So, culture is a place of a big role, right? Mm -hmm. Right, let's, let's look for a moment. You know, you and I as an individual, right up here, mm -hmm. and uh, the first people in our lives, they would, they would show us, they would value certain things better than others, right? Mm -hmm. They would say, this is important, this is not. This is right and this is wrong. So we get that, that kind of, of value from the first people in our lives, whether their parents, grandparents, whoever brings them. But then when we start in school from our teachers, we do get sometimes a bit of different values from them. And then perhaps we develop some friends. Turn this off for a bit. We develop some friends and, and these friends would actually have sometimes different values. And then, of course, you know, we get to go to church and we might have different values. And you see what's happening here? What is happening here? We have a lot of different values. We have a lot of different values. And they're not all the same. So this is called customary morality. Customary. And that means that customary morality is made up of the values, okay, values that we receive from the people who are part of our growing up lives. Now, let's go one step back and say, what are values? What are values? If someone were to ask you, what are values? What would you say? Values are what? Give me a definition in your own terms. Um, values would be um, it would be beliefs or ideas that we think highly of. Sorry? Beliefs or ideas that we think highly to. So ideas that we think highly. Yeah, good. What else? We're getting there. What else? Would you say that, that values, that your behavior, your actions are based on values, would you say that's really correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And yet, we usually do not think of the values, we think of the actions. Right? Mm -hmm. But then, what we need to do is look at the values that are in back of that, which determine, actually, what we're going to do, or why we have done a certain thing instead of another one. So values is something that we really need, and values are at the basis of any kind of morality. So this customary morality is problemsome and, and to some extent, because who are you? And some of these values are stronger than others. I myself, growing up in a Catholic family in Italy, going to Mass was extremely important. To a point that even if you were sick on a Sunday, even if you were on a stretcher, you had to go to Mass. And that's one of the values that was drilled so much into my life. But then I received contradictory values growing up, coming to the United States and so on and so forth. And all of those values, it's like a maze that each one of us has. So what we need to do is actually go through a process and say, well, you know what? I think this is me, and I think this is me, and I think this is me. In other words, by the time we are 18, what we do is we process out of all this customary morality values, those values that actually mean more to us, that somehow we identify with who we are. And sometimes, one of the values is all the way down here. It has nothing to do with my, with my immediate family, the family, the parents who actually raised me. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. This is called reflective morality. And reflective morality comprises, is comprised of values that actually determine to a great extent what you as, a, as an adult 
the way, what it is that you value, the things that you are ready to die for, not literally speaking, of course. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, reflective morality is something we need to think about. Having said that, let's go back to the meaning of ethics. What is ethics? Let's take a look at the definition, one of the most important definitions in our Western world, which comes from Aristotle. Aristotle, two, over 2,000 years ago, he wrote a very thick book, book this size, which is called the Nicomachean Ethics. And in that very thick book, whenever he discusses the concept of ethics, what ethics is, Aristotle says ethics is what you ought to do. To achieve a good life. Right. Isn't that interesting? Now, 2,000 years ago, he felt that ethics is what you ought to do to achieve the good life. The emphasis here, ladies and gentlemen, is on ought and on good. Now, what is the difference be between ought and should? Does anybody know? Should comes from the outside. You should be going at 40 miles an hour. In fact, if you don't, and if you're caught, you get a ticket, right? Your mother tells you you should bring the garbage out. In other words, these are commands from the outside. That's sure. Ought, on the contrary, they're commands from the inside. It's what you feel inside of you that you have to do. Those are commands from the inside. Now, it's interesting because even in, in the Catholic religion, or all faith tradition, their commandments, their rules and regulation, their principles that guide our lives. The difference in ethics is that ethics does not look at any commands from the outside, but it's purely what the individual inside of himself or herself decides what is right and what is wrong. So ethics is what you inside of you feel you have to do, what is right and what is wrong, in order to achieve the good life. Now, what is the good life? Now, the good life, according to Aristotle, was not actually owning um, a million dollars house or having a beautiful red Maserati outside. Uh, that's not what the good life was for him. For him, the good life meant was the life when you did what you felt inside of you was right in order to become the person you were meant to be. Wow, what does that mean? Aristotle believed that each one of us has inside of us a purpose. If I take in my hand a seed of one of those tall trees out there, that seed is nothing but a tiny little thing. However, with the right water, with the right place, the sun, and so forth, it's going to grow and become one of those big trees. But the seed is there. Mm -hmm. So each person has inside of himself, according to Aristotle, the seeds of becoming the person you're meant to be. And how do you know that? It's by feeling inside of you when something is right or it is not. And that's what the good life is. You see, notice the interesting thing that when you have no outside points of references, when you do not have outside commands, then you really need to look closely at your own self in order to decide what is right and what is wrong. So one big difference between religion and ethics is that in religion, you can always look, for example, in the Catholic tradition or the Christian tradition at the Ten Commandments. And therefore, you have some guidelines. In ethics, you really don't have any outside guidelines. It but has to come from the inside. From an ethical point of view, I think that it, it's saying that you already, you don't need the outside influences because 
and yourself, you have those things already instilled inside of you, so therefore the outside influences could only sort of hinder you because it, it comes from a more natural standpoint where you are just in tune to what it is you're destined to do so you take the necessary steps like almost simultaneously so that's why it's it's stated that you should take out the outside influences because the outside influences can deter you from that overall goal that you're here to accomplish yes absolutely now we need to be careful though when we look inside of ourselves, because it's not always, you know, crystal clear. Okay. Because we do have what is called rationalization. If I'm on a diet, and if I really should not be eating an ice cream cone, I can find a hundred thousand reasons for me wanting and, and needing to eat an ice cream cone. That's called rationalization. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need to really, really be careful because if I have nothing else except my own self, what I need to do is to make sure that I'm using reason and not rationalization. Okay? So one way is to look for the outside. That's one way, the way religion does. The other way in ethics is to be careful that we're using reason and not rationalization. You know what rationalization is, right? Mm -hmm. What is rationalization? Uh, rationalizing why you should do something. And what does it mean? Ver versus like giving reasons that will suit your own. Like you want to do this, so you're going to give yourself reasons to do this. Exactly. In other words, you find a way to use logic in order to achieve what you really want. Okay, so you go around in loops, so to speak. Now that's not reason, right? So which tells us then, if this is the case, what you ought to do to achieve the good life, then in ethics, we need to see what is, what is ethics made of? Well, one of the components of ethics then is reason, right? Mm -hmm. We just finished talking about that, reason. Somehow, if I'm not going to call up my best friend and say, what would you do in my situation? And he or she will proceed and say, now let me tell you what I would do, kind of stuff. Or, you know, looking at, my, um, at the Ten Commandments and say, well, number one, number two, and number three. So if I'm not going to go that route, if I'm going to look at myself only, I need to make sure that I use reason correctly. So let's take a look now at reason. What is the correct way for ethics to use reason in order to reach what is right? Okay, let's take a look at that. Aristotle says that one of the ways, perhaps the most important way by which we actually achieve Anything is through what he calls attractions. Okay? In other words, everything that I do, everything that you and I do, seems to be driven by attraction. We are attracted to different colors, we're attracted to different shapes, we are attracted to different landscapes, we're attracted, you know, to different majors, we're attracted. In other words, attraction is really something that tells us who we really are, the things, the person we're meant to be. Now, many times attractions are seen as being negative. In ethics, attra all attractions are good. Because attractions say an awful lot about your needs. If you're attracted towards certain people, certain landscapes, it tells you that you really need those in order to become the person you're meant to be. You are that kind of seed, going back to the concept of the seed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So therefore, if we start with attraction, the first thing that I need to do, if I'm going to be reasoning and understand what is right and what is wrong, I need to actually say, what is it that attracts me? So we're going to start with what? With that. So we need to clearly state, what is it that attracts me? What is the thing that actually that I need, that I want? That's the first thing. Now, the, all at, at this point, everything is fine, because as we said, all attractions are positive. Mm -hmm. Unless if you want to kill someone, that's a different story. But if it is an ethical uh, attraction, then all attractions, and by ethical I mean that you're not causing harm to another human being. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. 
not according to any commandments, but if, you, if that's the case, then that attraction is positive. Mm -hmm. At this point, once you know what your attraction is, you're going to actually say, how am I going to achieve that attraction? This is where the problems actually start, or where the rationalization could start, or where the reason needs to start. In other words, how am I going to actually translate an attraction into an action? Does that make sense? Using the ice cream cone example. All right? At this point, you, uh, in order to use reason, you list four, at least four, possibly five, major consequences that could occur if I were to achieve this goal of mine in this manner. All right? In ethics, a consequence is defined as something negative that could occur, either to yourself or to others. Let me repeat that. In ethics, a consequence is whenever you are causing harm, either to yourself or to others. Right? So in other words, when I decide that I'm going to move in a certain manner in order to achieve this attraction, before I proceed, I need to say to myself, wait a second, what negativity, what consequences will this act bring about? And you list, as I said, four, at least four, possibly five consequences. And this could be things that could hurt you, or others, either in the immediate future or in the long term. Could be years from now. Once you put that down, yeah? Can the consequences be good? No, as I finished oh. saying, oh. in ethics, a consequence is always a negative oh. occurrence, hurting yourself or others. In other words, do you understand why we're doing that, ladies and gentlemen? Do you understand what we're doing? In other words, we're trying to use reason. Because if not, we can be rationalizing. So in order to do that, I need to ask myself, wait a second, yeah, I'll proceed with this action, but am I causing any harm? If I am causing any harm, I need to know that harm. Because then, at this point, once you define it, then you're going to say, what is the percentage? What is the likelihood of these consequences of occurring? Is it 50%? Is it 20% or whatever, whatever? How likely? And in a moment, we're talking about theory. In a moment, we'll put it into a case study. This way, you'll understand a little bit better. In other words, you put down the likelihood of occurring and the percentage. Once you have done that, if you find that you have a very high percentage of consequences, either one or more, you have what in ethics is called the major evil. And what is the major evil? A major evil is when you are destroying your dignity or someone else's dignity. Let me repeat that. When you do have a high percentage of possible occurrence of your negative, of your consequences, you have what is called in ethics a major evil. And what is a major evil? A major evil is whenever you are destroying, when you're causing hurt, when you're destroying the dignity of your own self or of others. If you do have a major evil, this how is unethical. Okay. This act is unethical, ladies and gentlemen. Because you're causing too much harm. Your act would actually cause too much harm to yourself or to others. So therefore you cannot proceed. It's not right. This is reason. Not rationalization. Does that make sense? Yes. And what do you do? You're still stuck with your attraction. You still want to achieve this. And we said that all attractions 
unnecessary. You need to look for what is called an alternative. And what is an alternative? It's another how. Let me give you an example. This is a true case study. And uh, you heard this before. Mm -hmm. Mary is 16 years old. She lives in a, in a one room place in Liberty City. She just moved to Miami. She has a two month old baby who's very sick. Very high temperature. She doesn't know what, what the child has, but it has temperature galore. No money, doesn't even have a phone, doesn't know anybody. The only person she knows, below her there's a 7-Eleven and in the evening, sometimes she goes there and talks to the guy who, who does the night shift. And when she goes there and talks to him, as he's speaking with her, he breaks the boxes in the back and, and does what he needs to do. It's the only other person whom she knows. So Mary has a sick child. What she decides to do is to go downstairs. Uh, as this guy is, is in the back breaking boxes, She's going to pull the cash register open. She's going to pull out a $20 bill, run upstairs to her child, take him to the emergency room, and, and, and have him looked after. Is Mary's act ethical or not? Okay. This, this actually happened because she was, she was caught and, and she ended up losing her child. Okay. What does Mary want? Her child get better. She wants her child to be better. Is that ethical? Yes, indeed. She's yes. a mother. How is she going to do it? Still. She's going to get him better by going downstairs, pulling twenty dollars, not by stealing, because that's a judgment. Well, taking twenty dollars. Twenty dollars from the guest register while he's not looking, and then take him to the emergency room and judge. That's the how. What are the consequences of this act? What is the negativity that could occur? I already told you, she, she, she lost her child, so she's going to lose her child. What else? She could go to jail. Yeah, yeah, she definitely can go to jail. What else? What else? Come on, guys. Uh, she will never see her child again. Well, obviously, because if she's yeah. losing her child. But let's give, give me another one. Oh. Does she have anybody to talk to anymore? What? She won't have anybody to talk to anymore? Um, okay. Okay? What else? Connected to that, she lose the friendship of this guy, and also you will get into trouble. Okay? It's a very, it's a very simple case study. What's the likelihood of occurring? Very high. Very high. In fact, losing a child is... Because also, there are video cameras, by the way, you know, in these places. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they, they see everything. So the likelihood of occurring is probably, for all of these, 80, 90, 75 percent. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's a major evil. there's definitely a major evil. And if it is a major evil, the act is unethical. unethical. In other words, she cannot do it. She cannot proceed with this. And she needs to look, though, there's still the need to take care of a child is still present. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So she needs to look for an alternative. an alternative. And what's an alternative? She could ask the man. She could, yeah. ask. She could ask the man. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is that? And again, this is a, it's a philosophical point that we need to raise. Why is that we have such difficulty with... Um, Asking people. Because I think that it has to do with, okay, you become vulnerable because if you ask people for things, sometimes in society, uh, people may look at you differently. That's the obvious fact of things. And I find that in many cases, people don't like that feeling of vulnerability. I don't know, it just paralyzes some people. Okay. Yeah. Now this, as I said, this was a true case study, and um, when they, and she was asked, why didn't she ask this this man whom she know know quite well? She said, well, it, it was the easier thing to do because I was going to replace it afterwards anyway. Rationalization instead of reason. You see what I'm saying? So this little exercise is.
That's actually what ethics is all about, if we're going to use reason. Mm. Now, ethics, though, is made up of another component. And the second one is reason. So ethics is made up of reason, but it's also made up of will. What does that mean? It means that once even we know that something is ethical or not, like in this case right here, this is unethical, right? At this point, even if you know what you're doing, that there is a major evil, that there's a likelihood you lose your child, and on and on, you could still say, I will proceed. Does this sound familiar? Yes, mm -hmm. it does, doesn't it? We all know of people who you explain to them, you know, if you proceed, this and this and this will happen. They and they say, I understand, but I will do it anyway. Okay. In ethics, there's no judgment. Nobody judges you. The only thing that is important is to understand the consequences of your act. Understand that when you are, if she were to follow this like she did, if she was aware of this, she would cause so much harm, which she did. She lost a child. So, so much harm to herself and to her baby. And that's what we need to keep in mind. That it's not really even that important whether we choose a, an act which is ethical or not. Mm -hmm. But what is important is the awareness that we gain by knowing that some act produces an awful lot of, of hurt. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we need to actually hurt as little as we possibly can ourselves and others. That's how you become the person you're meant to be. So you see, it's quite simple. Ethics is not difficult. If you can remember this little, basically we already have done a case study with Mary. And in fact, your final is made up. Half of your final is a case study. And what we're going to do on Thursday is to do case studies. On Thursday, you need to actually have read part of the, the book, the PDF file. You also need to bring to class the um, Shopping for a Better World. Because what I'm going to do with you on Thursday is to go over case studies and also products and services. And also Food Inc., in other words, all those, the Food Inc., Shopping Better, Better World, and having read as much as you can of the first 66 pages on, on right and reason. So you see, what this means then, if we think that ethics, which is what you ought to do to achieve the good life, ethics which is made up of reason and will, ethics then, the chief component that stands out is a word that starts with an R. Can anybody tell me what that is? Reason. Well, obviously, yes. But what is the word that Respon responsibility. responsibility. Do you see what I'm saying? When we exercise our own freedom we have by doing an effort, by doing this little exercise, we become responsible. Even when we're choosing an act which is unethical, we know what we're doing, and therefore we become responsible human beings. Do you see this, the different approach between this and religion? Or between this and law? In law, it's totally different. Here, it's the person who actually knows. Because it's not someone else's. It's not going at 50 miles an hour in a 40 mile zone and not saying, goody, goody, I was not caught. So therefore, I didn't get the ticket. That would be, that would be the, the civic way of doing it. In ethics, you know inside when you're causing harm. You know when something is unethical. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're, you are the only one who knows. Nobody else. Questions? Okay, this is the first part of the lecture.